Okay. Sweet. Okay, so welcome everybody and hello. My name is Shannon and today I'm going to be your OPIC project instructor. So if you joined us last week, I'm your same instructor this week too. And um, before we get started on the demo for today, I want to let you guys know a little bit about myself. So I've been using um, Copic markers for the past 11 years, and I got hooked on them when I was in about eighth grade. So since then, my drive and passion for creativity um, took me all the way through college. I attended SCAD, the Savannah College of Art and Design, and um, have been using my 11 years of experience with Copic markers to um, you know, give some tips and tricks on how I use the markers. So with that being said, I want to let you guys um, have a sneak peek at what we're going to do today. And this is an example of our little goodie bag that we're going to make. So I've got um, a paper flower here on one of these sides. And I've got some uh, satin ribbon tied into a bow on this side. And then I've also colored the bag itself using the um, Copic Chow six piece bright set colors. Um, I also have paper flowers here that I'm wearing as earrings. So there's a lot of different ways besides embellishing this goodie bag to use these other um, surfaces. So again, if you joined us last week, um, I was just giving tips and tricks on blending and that was making a bookmark on your paper on a two dimensional surface. Today, what's really exciting is we're gonna take that to a more three dimensional level. So again, we've got paper flowers, we've got satin ribbons and we've got this goodie bag surface. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flip my screen over so you guys can see what I'm working with on my workstation. Can you guys um, see my uh, screen in front of me? Yeah, okay, great. so um, yeah, in front of me, I've got um, just what I'm gonna use today. So I've got my ruler. Um, this is a Tori ruler. Since I'm gonna cut my ribbon to be 20 inches long. If you want to cut your ribbon longer or shorter, that's, that's also totally fine. But I like that 20, um, 20 inch length for this demo. And then I've got paper flower samples here. Um, when I was at my local Michael stores, I bought a 36 piece set of, you know, pre-made paper flowers like this. So I'm going to be using um, this paper flower today. And this is an example of how it's colored. I've got my scissors. Um, for cutting the ribbon and maybe making any incision on the flowers that you want. And then I've got the Copic Chow six piece brights set colors. So these are the six colors we're going to use today. And then I've got a small paper bag. This measures about um, four by five inches. So got our little goodie bag. And then underneath all of this, I have a practice sheet of paper. Um, this is just to catch any um, marker bleeding whenever we're coloring the ribbons or the paper flowers. So um, yeah, we were using marker paper. I might not need this extra sheet, but because these are a little bit more delicate or they, the surfaces act a little bit differently than a normal piece of marker paper, I like to have that sheet underneath just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move um, the bag and the scissors and whatnot out of the way and slide my markers over. Going to get ready to start coloring the ribbons. So I do want to mention too that um, last week I had talked about the flicking technique for blending and what's really great about satin ribbons is that this um, fabric will kind of naturally blend the pigment together um, without having to do a lot of effort. So this is what we'll get with blending three colors together. And I don't really have to go over the colors too much because of that fabric. It blends really well just naturally. So this is the effect that we're going to get. And if you um, guess from the colors here, I'm going to use the um, Y06, the YG06, and the B00. So I'm going to go ahead and get my ribbon out. And um, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to work, um, you know, over here on this side of my surface. And I'm also going to work from the bottom of the ribbon up. So I'm going to go ahead and keep my example ribbon here just for y'all to see and to have as reference as I am working. 
And then I have my ribbon over here. And I do want to mention too, this is about three, four inches. Um, so it's not very wide, but it's not super narrow either. So if, if you have a wider ribbon, that is great. It might just take you more time to fill in the space. So just letting you guys know that. And I'm just going to kind of follow along with my example next to me. I'm going to start with my Y06. And just to give you guys a little example here, um, or talk to you about the marker, um, the super brush nib is the side that I will be using, and that has this gray stripe. So the chow, just like the sketch, has the super brush nib and the medium broad nib. Um, some physical differences are the caps. These are the entire, you know, color of the marker is the color of the cap versus the sketch that just has it on the very end. Um, and these are shaped like a circle, so they're not like an oval. Um, chow are also sold at a cheaper price point um, because there's less ink here in the barrel, um, and they have 180 colors versus your full 358. But these are a great way to get started using the high quality Copic markers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uncap that super brush side. And again, I love this nib so much because it's super flexible and, um, you know, really gives good blending. So that's what that super brush nib looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, gently fill in this very bottom area here. Um, and then I'll hold this with my left hand. And then I'm going to work, um, flick my brush up out one and a half to one and three fourths inches. It doesn't have to be that exact measurement. If you want to shade more, uh, that's totally fine. But I'm just going to flick the color up and I'll show an example right here on my test sheet. So we press a little bit harder and, and lift it as we go up. So it's just like a gentle flick or a feather. And also I do want to say this is a satin ribbon. So you might be hearing a little bit of that marker squeak, depending on how quickly I move my brush. So again, I'm just flicking that color. So it's not as saturated here towards the end. It's more dense here at the base. I'm going to put that aside and grab my green color. YG06. Okay, and then now to blend this in, I'm going to go up here to my midsection because I'm going to have about half this length one direction and half the other. And again, this is with satin. These techniques I might not necessarily use for paper, but for the, the satin texture of this, you know, ribbon, this works really well. And then I'll go from that base and kind of work my way up. And you'll see that color overlap here in the middle. Right now it looks like a straight line, but we're gonna work that out and just add a few more layers to get that color blended. And that way we have this nice flicking technique combined with um, adding multiple layers to create more um, contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there and grab my blue, my B00. What's nice about these chow markers too is that the color um, number is listed twice on the mark body. So again, I'm going to work up here and kind of flick my brush downward into the green. And then I'll go from the middle and flick upwards. Again, I've got that multiple layer of pigment here in the middle, so I can add some more layers of ink there to even it out and not have it look as streak, as a marker streak. Hey, Shannon, quick question yeah. from the audience. How many inches of ribbon is that? I'm guessing like six to eight inches or how long? Oh, actually this is 20 inches. Oh, a full 20 inches of ribbon? Dang, okay. Yeah, so if I, this is my example, um, it won't fit in the screen, but this is 20 inches. But if you want to cut it shorter, that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to repeat this yellow, green, blue um, about four times. So if you want to make it about 10 inches, you would just repeat this twice. Awesome, thank you. 
the other way. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll do that again. I'm just gonna slowly start to scooch this down. And actually, before I go ahead and repeat that, I just wanna show you guys what I've done here. So you see that yellow will naturally kind of blend with that green because of the satin. I can go over this again with another layer of that Y06, but I kind of like that streaky look and the blue also flows very effortlessly with that green. Okay, so I'll go ahead and slide this down. Okay, I'm gonna grab that yellow again, the Y06, and um, about halfway up to one work, maybe three fourths inch, I will start to flick down into the blue. And if you notice, now that we're going into the blue, this starts to get a nice light green color because yellow is a primary color and so is blue. If you mix these together, you get a green color. So what's neat about this is they, these colors in particular blend very well together. Um, and two of these colors can create this color. So if you don't happen to have a green color or if you don't have this specific set with you today, um, if you want, you can actually make your own green combining the yellow and the blue. And I can actually show that here once I finish this next uh, segment of ribbon. So I'm gonna flick this color down to that yellow. And then carry that up. What's nice too about the Copic Chow is um, they are also refillable. Actually, every Copic mark is refillable. So in case you feel like your, your ink is running low, you can buy the refill color and um, keep that marker intact, but just add more ink, which is great. Okay, I'll slide this down again. Hey, Shannon, I've got one more question from Gail in the audience. She asks, sure. when you tie a bow, you get some of the wrong side of the ribbon. Does this show up in the same way on the back side? Yeah, so let me go ahead and just finish filling in this blue area here, and then I'll show you. Actually, Gail, I can answer your question directly. It's not hard to refill Copic markers. Uh, you actually get the Copic ink. That's our new refill product. Gently pull out the nib with tweezers. We actually sell our own tweezers to gently pull out that nib and then you stick the Copic ink in there and refill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's great about the Copic refill. Um, um, I do want to mention too, before going into detail about refill, this is what the front looks like of that finished ribbon and this is the back. So it is a little bit more pale, um, but it's not going to look completely, you know, washed out. If you wanted to make this backside more saturated before you tie the bow, you can go over it again with the same colors. So I can go over this with blue. It's just gonna make the other side more saturated, but it'll add more um, depth to the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna go with my yellow. And this time I'm actually gonna work further up because I'm not going to use my green. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a green. So I'm going to go further up in here and then have my blue and bring that down. So I'm going to um, take advantage of this satin ribbon and um, how easy it is to blend. So I'm going to go um, right around, let me scoot this up for you guys to see, flick that color into the blue a little bit and then just bring this up, nice big saturated section of the yellow. Because again, this area that would be green, I'm going to make a green with these two colors, right? So that is my yellow segment. Now I'm going to take that B00 and do the same thing. Again, I need to hold the ribbon with my left hand, so pardon me covering this up too much. But I'm going to bring that into this yellow and really fade those colors together. So I'm working in a much larger area right now, um, but I'm just gently bringing in these blues and adding in layers of the pigment. So right now in here, getting this nice green color, I need to bring my yellow a little bit further up. 
just pop my cap on. So I've got a nice green going there just with, you know, yellow and the blue, but I need to go back and add some more yellows to get this further up. So this using Y06 and B00, this is not the exact YG06 color, but it does give you a very nice light green. So again, I'm going to take my blue and kind of soften that out. And there we go. So I'm going to hold this up in comparison. So right there is the green that I just made using the blue and the yellow. And this right down here is the YG06 color that we used out of the tube. So again, this is the, this is the green I just made. So it's a nice, uh, very soft green. I only have a little bit left of my ribbons here um, before we are done shading with this looking technique. So I'm going to take my Y06 again and flick. If you, um, I do want to point this out since I'm holding the ribbons, if you want to tape it to your table for um, uh, just more stability, that would be totally fine too. I just have to move these around to show you guys. So otherwise I would tape it, that would help. Okay, I'm gonna take that green out again and just you know, blend the colors together. Again, getting that nice marker squeak. So the flicking technique and just adding more depth by layering. Um, those are like the two most commonly used uh, marker techniques that I've come across. And to finish this off here, I need to just be delicate and flick it down into the green. I'm also, so right here, I was flicking upwards, not down into the color. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. Um, because I'm going against the grain or against my consistent kind of uh, flow of flicking, I softly apply the brush. And so the satin fabric will blend those colors, you know, naturally together for me. But I'm going to hold this up. And um, this is what my ribbons look like. So again, I'm just alternating colors. And luckily for me, the satin fabric really like naturally um, has those colors collaborate with each other. And it's really easy to blend using this fabric. Okay, so I've got my ribbons completed. I'm gonna put away one of them off to the side and I'm gonna grab my scissors. And what I'm gonna do here on the very edge, it might be slightly frayed. Um, I'm gonna cut a little triangle shape out. So I have my scissors. And all I'm gonna do is cut, I, I guess that's like a quarter of an inch up um, to about the halfway point midsection of this ribbon. And then I'll go from the other side and do the same thing. Hey, so Shannon, we've got another question from the audience, this time about uh, the fabric itself. Uh, does the fiber content matter? Would cotton or polyester work as well or better? Um, so like say, uh, in my past, I've actually created um, custom like vans using Copic markers. The thing with alcohol markers is that they will soak through. So notice this is the back side and this is the front. Um, if you're using a um, like paste marker, that paint based marker is a water base and it'll sit on the surface so it won't like soak through. So if you're using like a cotton or a, a canvas, you can use alcohol markers, but they're going to bleed a lot. So if you're looking for details with that, you're not going to get that as much. Um, but again, uh, for this sake, since I'm not doing something hyper detailed, it's just blending colors together, you can do that very easily. But if you're looking for hyper detail, not, it's not going to be as easy due to the surface. Does that help? Um, but yeah, so I just cut out this little triangular shape here on the end. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side just to give it a nice crisp finish. So cut a little bit up into the print and cut over here to make a triangle shape. 
and there we go. So we've got our ribbons colored. We've got these cute little finishes here on the ends. And now I'm gonna go ahead and set my practice sheet aside. And um, I'm actually going to go ahead and get out a piece of masking tape. So I've got a strip of masking tape right here. And what I'm going to do, this is just a little um, cheat that I've established, is take one of my uh, markers and uh, tape it down to my surface so it's nice and firm. And then at the halfway point of my ribbon, I'm gonna flip it to the back side. So this is the back of my ribbon. And I'm gonna slide it underneath my marker. And I'm gonna use this marker as like a base for tying this ribbon. So I'm just gonna use this to tie a knot. Oops. And again, um, with your ribbons, you can kind of like fold them and manipulate them to make sure they face the front. But again, if they don't, um, no worries. You can always, you know, color the back side of the ribbon too. So there we go and kind of adjust it. I'll slide it off my marker. And then again, if I want to make this section kind of puff out, I can manipulate it if I want. Let me turn it this way. But yeah, so there we go. If you want to tighten the back, you can. But this is um, the ribbon that's tied into a neat little bow. I also want to mention because I used my marker as a base, I've got this kind of big area in the back here that I can place tape on. So that'll be really nice when I um, tape it to my bag here. So that's why I like to have this little space back here. Okay, that is your ribbon. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and I'm going to bring out um, a paper flower. Or I can just set here in case you guys wanna see that for reference. Okay, untape my, my marker and I'm gonna bring out that um, practice sheet again. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and fold it in half. Um, but yeah, if you guys um, missed that uh, ribbon, I can go back to it later. Or if you guys want to um, check out this video, it will be recorded and posted. So you can check it out too. Okay, so I've got some examples to show you guys. I'll actually, Keep that right there. So this is my um, just blank flower. Um, I bought a set of 36 flowers at my local store and some of them have this like beaded center. I'll show you guys this. This is like a beaded center. Um, this one just has like a little, I don't know, a little uh, bead. Um, some of them have like little buttons to them. Um, and then some of them also have you know, this kind of squiggly centerpiece. So, uh, but for this demo, I'm just going to use this one with a simple center. And um, I want to show you guys too um, some examples and I'll set these up here um, just to have as reference. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with this blank paper flower. And for what I'm going to use for the demo today, um, I'm actually going to use the B05. The um, B00 and the YG03 and the Y, I'm sorry, YG06 and the Y06. So that's, these are four colors I'm going to use and um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this is a paper flower and this is not marker paper. It's like a thin, not tissue paper, but it's a rather thin, um, uh, it's got a, like a feathered texture to it. So it's not your typical mark paper that will be smooth and thicker. So for this particular instance, because of the surface, I'm gonna actually start with my darker color first. And the reason being, let me lift this up. So 
I started with um, my darker color first here in the back of this petal. And then I added the lighter color second. And this will naturally lighten that area without me having to do any, you know, back and forth blending as you would with a marker paper. I will just add one layer of this B05 and then one layer of B00. And for this particular paper, that actually works really well. In the front, in the foreground of this flower, I apply the light color first and the dark color second. So as you can see, these colors have naturally blended together yet. I need to go back again with B00, but to make it faster on this particular paper, dark and then light actually works really well. So again, just for today and this, just for this paper, I would recommend that. So that is what I'm going to show you. And that's what I have here as the example, um, the dark color first and then the darker green first. So I'm gonna start with that. And so I'm gonna grab my B05 on the super brush side. And um, I'm just gonna start to slowly add in this pigment and kind of trace around this little center button here and flick the pigment out. So notice too, I'm holding the marker almost vertical because I wanna get into those little nooks and crannies. If you wanna hold your marker to the side, that would be fine too, um, whatever's comfortable for you. For me, I like to hold it almost vertically with these paper flowers. And I'm just gonna keep rotating. And just, yeah, flick that color up. Okay, so I went uh, a little over halfway with applying this color of blue. And um, I'm gonna take my YG06 now, and um, I'm gonna need to lift these uh, foreground petals up to get underneath. So again, if my hand is in the way, my apologies. <laughs> I just need to get um, underneath those front layer of petals. Similar to what I just did with the B05, I'm gonna to start to flick and add the color. Um, you also want it to be a little further up in the petal. Let me lift, show you. You want it to be further up in the petal because you want it to actually be seen. Got something in front of it, which is this, color, this layer of petals. So that's why I flicked up a little bit further. Also, the yellows will blend in very well with this um, at the next step. So again, just lifting these first layer of petals and flicking in this green color. I do want to mention too, if you guys want to use um, the pink color in this set or the purple, you can. These are just colors that I think look well together. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Oh, and I do want to say too, um, the color combinations and the applications for these paper flowers are quite endless. Um, I've been experimenting a bit before giving this demo, and um, you can, you know, make these paper flowers, say, into earrings. That's one example over here. I actually am wearing those during the class, um, and those are using the pink, the yellow, and the green from this same set, so you can use different color combinations. You can use these paper flowers in your scrapbooking for making cards, for you know, embellishing a frame or like a wreath maybe for your front door. Um, with these paper flowers, the possibilities are very endless, which is very neat. Just adds, you know, three dimensionality to your Copic Mars. So again, I'm going to lift that and zoom this in for you guys to see. So I've got my um, B05 in there first. I have flicked out the um, YE06 behind it. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop here and add the B00 and blend that in. And then the Y06 and blend that in. So we'll be getting a lot of fun um, chemical react here with the alcohol marker.
And we've actually got two questions from the audience. First off, with that flower earring that you have, what's the center <laughs> attachment on that? Oh yeah, so this is um, just, well, it came standard like this. This is just like a bunch of beads kind of glued to the center. Okay, can you flip it over? Someone's asking to see the back of it. Yeah, so I have, well, I didn't, this is what it looks like when you bleed through. And this <laughs> is why we have a piece of paper underneath. Because <laughs> again, this is not marker paper, so it's going to bleed. And, okay. um, but it does a lot of funky um, reactions. And then this is just double-sided tape and a piece of plastic that I punched a hole through. Okay, right, perfect. So, Someone yeah. else has a question regarding your ring. It has a B on it. What's that from? Oh, yeah. Um, this is my uh, national championship ring from SCAD. So when I went to SCAD, I was a student athlete and um, won the national championship for swimming. So that's what the, the ring is for. Okay. Yeah. So SCAD is a good art school. I highly recommend. <laughs> um, but yeah, so right now I've got um, B00. And what I'm going to do is um, go from the tip or the edge of these petals and flick it inwards. So again, um, I will lift this up and show you guys once I add this pin. But you'll start to see um, that B05 lift and begin to blend with this B00. So yeah, I'm just slowly rotating my flower. And what's really neat for, um, for me too, having more of an illustration background, learning how to use my Copics outside that two-dimensional flat surface is very fun. Um, I'm kind of getting addicted to making these ribbons and paper flowers. Um, and I'm thinking about getting like uh, blank shoelaces to use the same techniques. So whatever I did here with the satin ribbons, you can apply that to like, well, I'm going to test out with like shoelaces and whatnot to really make those fun and custom. I'm going to lift this up. So um, this is what we've got right now. Notice how um, there's more, you know, blending going on here. Before, this is what the blues looked like. You know, there wasn't much blending going on there yet, but right here we've got a lot more blending. These colors are looking really great together. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply the yellow color um, back here with the green. So I'm actually going to um, kind of take that yellow and flick it into the green. And we are going to get a lot of really great um, bright colors here too. So again, just slowly rotating this. and flick that color downward into that green. Um, for this demo um, on the supply list, it was just using this six piece bright set. But if you wanna have like more details involved, you can use a multi-liner pen to maybe add some more of those um, delicate lines or other details that you want. Or perhaps even colored pencils if you want more precision. Um, I personally love using colored pencils on top of my Copic markers. These markers serve as great base to my um, like creations. And then obviously with pencils, you can get some really fine details there too. I do also want to mention the uh, sorted paper flowers that I got at Michael's. They, they have different sizes. So this is a, a larger paper flower. Um, they have one that's a little smaller too. So they come in a variety of um, sizes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up and show you guys this again. Honestly, this will look really cool as a ring as well. I like how these paper flowers are very versatile. But yes, yeah, so we've got the green and the yellow very effortlessly blending together. Same with the two blues. So notice we've got one little layer of petals here in the back. What I'm going to do to make the foreground pop is just use the solid um, B05 color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take this out. 
um, and just again like fold these petals back and color. So for example, I'm going to show you guys with this with this earring. When I flip it, you see all this color back here. Um, I'm going far back into the petal to make sure all my areas are covered. But if you just want to color like this, the area that's exposed, you can do that as well, whatever you want to do. So I need to uh, fold back multiple layers of petals now and start to fill in with this very dark, um, bold B05. So yeah, when I lay those colors down, these will really stand out here, especially since the tip of the petals, uh, one layer before this is bright yellow. Yellow and blue to me have always been a very nice color combination. Um, really makes each color stand out. Also blue and orange look very well together too. Okay, do we have any other questions about this process or? I'm just making sure I'm good on speed here. Um, actually, Nate, I do have a question for the audience. Um, how many of you guys have this uh, six-piece bright set with you today? Let's find out. So Jessica has this six-piece bright set. Awesome. Yeah, the Chow sets are a really great way to get started with your Copic collections. And if you don't have the bright set, the colors I'm using, again, any other combination of colors would work perfectly fine for this. Let's see, LaShonda has the six piece brights. Grace has the primary chow set. Uh, Prahul okay. and Raleigh are looking to get them. Let me turn my camera on real quick. This is what the six piece bright set looks like. You'll see these right here. It's a good set. Um, they're actually pretty, Pretty cheap. Uh, 20, hold on, let me look up the price on Michaels, Michaels.com. Doing to this to you guys. Just to see the contrast of what we've got going on. And again, if I hold it this way, you've got this nice layering effect, these beautiful ways to blend with your markers. 3599 michaels.com. Keep an eye out for coupons, sales, anything like that. Actually, Jessica just linked to it. Thank you, Jessica. And I am turning off my video. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Um, yeah, this is also why we have that test sheet underneath. Because this isn't uh, marker paper, uh, you will get some blending. So just stay safe and have that sheet underneath. Okay, so I've got this uh, paper flower all done. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside as well and all my other little paper examples and bring out the, um, the goodie bag. So at this point, um, if you guys want to focus more on the flowers or make another ribbon, you totally can. Um, I need to bring in two more colors here. Um, but yeah, so with this small bag, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and color this with Copic markers. But if, say, you want to make more flowers or make more ribbons, um, I do have a bag that has, um, you know, this dark green turquoise, just a piece of uh, textured construction paper. So I chose this color um, because it stands out really well against these light colors used in the ribbons, as well as with this um, blue and yellow flower. So if you want to use a piece of construction paper, um, and just glue it onto your baggie, you can. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, color it with these markers. So because this is, um, you know, has lights and darks and are very yellow and blue and green focused, I'm going to use um, the pink color here on the front, it's R32. So I'm going to go ahead and uncap the medium brown side. And again, it depends on what you color the flower to be. If your flower has different colors, maybe you want to color the bag differently. Um, you can color it yellow, you can color it with pink and yellow. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to use two colors here on the front. But I am using the um, this side of the broad nib to just create these borders, this border effect. Um, I don't want it to go clean off to the edge of the bag, like this little border. But that's just me. Again, if you want to do it differently, that's totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use this medium broadside and start to fill in this space. But I will say, once I start getting to this area where the handles are, it's going to start to get a little bit bumpy. So, you know, quickly add in the ink to have it blend more together, but we'll get to there in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding in this layer of pink and using the medium broad side because I can quickly add even layers. I think I'm just going to stroke it from the bottom to the top. You can work in more of a like snake motion if you want, kind of going up and down, up and down. Um, I realize that I'm actually better lifting my hand and just going from bottom to top. But whatever works for you guys. And if you want to use the super brush nib for this, that is also totally fine. Okay, so now we're getting towards where the handles are. So I'm going to move a little bit slower and try and get my ink down as best as I can. But the good news is, um, if you have any little mistakes here with filling in the colors, um, you can place the flower towards the top and kind of cover it up, if you, if you will. So. Or if you want to Gail right here, uh, Shannon, Gail's asking, do you insert something in the bag to prevent bleed through the other side or inside? Yeah, so let me um, just show you. I don't have anything in here. Um, and it's not, I hope you can see, it's not bleeding through to the other side. I mean, you can see the pink where I've just layered, but it's not bleeding through. So the back side is still in good shape. But again, you can. So I'm going to pause here and, and hold up my flower. So I like how this pink looks against this flower color. It's a, a very pretty kind of summer vibe here, although we are going into fall. So if you want to make this, instead of just using the pink, um, let's say you want to add a little bit of orange to it. So I'm actually going to uncap that yellow color. And I'm going to go ahead and use the super brush and flick it up just a little bit to show you what the pink and the yellow look like blended. So I'm just going to gently add this yellow and you can make a really nice orange color. So you can color on top of the pink using the entire, you know, color the entire area if you want. I'm just using this as an example. So this is, you know, adding a little bit of yellow and it's getting smooth with the pink. So if I place my flower on top of that, I really like how it's starting to look. So I'm going to go ahead and just add one more layer of the pink um, from the base up. Um, maybe add a little bit more depth in here. Trying and lift it, fade the colors to get more. It's going to look darker now because I'm adding another layer of ink, but I want to get that natural blend and to get those colors where I want them. But again, this is completely up to you. I'm just showing you guys an option, but um, these colors in general, because they're, you know, curated to be in a set, they all go very harmoniously together. So I've got this almost like you know, sunset kind of look going on here. And it really allows this dark blue and these yellows to pop. So I really like this color combination. This is looking really good. Okay, so I'm not going to glue this on yet. I have to color the other side first. Um, so I'm going to flip it to the back. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of manipulate this area to fold. 
so that this is flat. Well, as flat as it can be, I'm gonna to have to hold it down a little bit. But okay, so now we've got this very bright yellow, green, and blue ribbon. So what's going to allow for a big contrast here is using one of our, we have two darker colors, right? We've got this B05 and this V17. You can color this with the purple or with the dark blue. I think I'm actually gonna go with the dark blue for the back. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set this aside, but these colors will really have a good contrast together. So I'll save the purple actually to color these um, sides. So I'll use the purple here and the blue on the back. So I'm gonna take that B05, uncap that medium bra, because again, this nib is very stiff, so you get a smooth line of precision, which is great. And I'm gonna turn my bag and just get that nice outline. I will say I am not using a um, ruler here. I am just eyeballing it. So if you wanna get a ruler out, that'd be um, probably more precise, but I'm kinda just going with the flow of the paper and using the edge as my ruler, my visual ruler. Trying to run this parallel as best I can. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it to its side again. Uh, it's easier to color um, the shorter length is a longer length, but if you want to do the longer one, uh, if you're up for the challenge, go for it. So I'm going to take that medium bra nib again and start to add in this dark, rich B05 color. I'm going a little bit slower because the bag, oh, you can see that's where the crease is. So this area could be a little interesting to color. <laughs> and slowly add in my pigment. I do want to mention too, I've had these markers for a little bit now, but before this demo, I refilled them. So they are good to go. And I will also mention too with refilling, if you have the um, Copic ink bottles, that should refill your chow markers, um, I believe nine times. And it should refill your sketch markers um, seven times. And notice here, this is where the straps are. So I'm gonna flip to my super brush because this is more flexible and um, won't create as many bumps along the way um, because it will naturally just kind of hug the surface of this paper. The medium broad, again, because it is stiff, it's better for flat, smooth surfaces. But it does give, like earlier down here where it was more smooth, very consistent lines. So I'm going to try and cover up this little little runaway line there. And set that marker aside and show you guys how that looks with that ribbon. So that is really popping out, really giving a lot of rich color and contrast. So I'm really liking how this looks. Now, if you want to add another layer of the blue per se, let's add just a little bit here at the base, um, kind of following the same principle what I showed on the other side. So I just drew another line right there and I'm going to flick just a little bit, not very much past that crease. So I'm barely adding another layer. But again, this is just to show an example of, you know, creating more depth here at the base. And again, nothing bled through on the other side, so we're looking good. And this ribbon is really looking nice. And again, we've got a little bit more contrast here than we did earlier because I add second air and I um, just gently flicked with a super brush nib. Okay. So now this is where things get a little interesting. We've got to kind of puff out this bag and I'm going to use a little box um, to stuff it with so that I can actually um, color these sides. 
So I've got my handy dandy box that holds my replacement nibs. <laughs> so if anyone's wondering what the replacement nibs look like, um, this is actually what they look like if you buy the replacement nibs. So, but this box is about the same size that will fit this bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that. So now I've got a, um, more of a flat surface to work with. And I'm gonna take that V17 color and color this area in. Let me set this down for a second and uncap it. And I'm gonna use the super brush for this side. <sighs> the reason being um, is because I've got a fold here, a fold there. You know, there's, there's lots of folds going on here. So the um, super brush nib will kind of maneuver your way around that a lot easier than the medium broad. So I'm going to take my uh, tip of the super brush and start to outline a little area that I want to color with nibble. Um, just trying to fill this in. Again, I'm holding my pen a little bit differently than I normally would because I want you guys to see this. So if my lines start to get a little wobbly, um, I'm just trying to hold this so you guys can see. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to draw a line down the middle where that crease is. Because if you noticed right there as I was drawing it, um, it's kind of hard to color where the crease. So I almost try and like pre-color it. That helps me a lot. And I'm going to go and color these two segments separately. So I'm going to quickly kind of slither in this color. And again, where those creases are, ugh, not my best friend. But I'm going to slither in this color, going back and forth relatively fast. And by doing this, those um, like lines or segments before, they'll blend into each other a lot easier because you're not giving them enough time to dry. And if you give them time to dry, it gets that streak, that marker streaky look. So this is a relatively smooth layer of um, this violet color. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Again, I'm working in segments of two to avoid having to cross over that center, like that center line. If I do that, my lines could be a more jagged, a little less even. And my desired look for this is to make it as smooth as possible. So there we go. That is one of these little sides. So I'm going to take this out just to show you. We've got this nice gradient here in the front, with this yellow to make an orange. We've got our purple a very nice contrast between these sides. And we've got our blue. So this is a very bold, bright, colorful bag so far. And all we've got is one more side. So we're almost wrapped up here. I'm gonna slide in the box again. Um, you could use like a fabric or whatever you got around you to um, help stuff this. Okay, and I'm just gonna repeat what I had just done. So I'm going to draw a line um, going around the border here. Again, I'm not using a ruler. I'm just eyeballing it and trying to get as close to parallel um, as possible. And if they aren't exactly perfect, like I just made a little wave right there, I can try and go back and uh, spin that out a little bit. Okay, and again, I'm just going to try, I might need to turn this so that I can get my hand more steady, um, and just draw a line where that crease is. Those folds can get stubborn. Okay, so there we go. And again, I'm just going to slither in this pigment, kind of work my way around these folds here. Okay, so now I should be good to go. Okay. Almost.
almost wrapped up. Okay, there's one part of this side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work down here. Again, just kind of fiddle with your brush nib to get those segments covered in. And then, yeah, I call this slithering in the color because it's kind of following this, you know, snake-like back and forth. I don't lift my pen unless I have to for my hand. because I like to have the colors um, applied quickly so they blend without settling too much. We've actually got a coloring question, Shannon. Prahul wants to know, do you have to go over the middle crease twice? Um, you don't have to. So right there I did because, again, the crease is pretty. So when I was naturally coloring it, my hand shifted or the paper shifted. So that's why I went over it twice. Um, because the paper creases there, it will naturally appear darker no matter what you do because it will sink into that area. Mm. So I can go over it or I can add you know, say I want more depth here so I can flick some color, you know, add a few more layers to get more of that effect that the center has. Um, but yeah, the center point, because that's where the paper naturally creases, it will be darker. You don't have to go over it though. Um, but the reason, again, I think I said this earlier, but the reason I go over it first is because I don't want to have to jump it every single time I color. It's just easier to bring it into two. I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of a hassle. So yeah, I'll remove that box. And again, like I just showed you guys there, you can flick more color if you wanna add more depth. I'm just gonna leave this part as is because the front and the back is where all the cool stuff is. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and compress it back to where it's flat because now we're going to finish it up. So um, I'll move my earring away, out of the way. So now what we're going to do is take this flower, I'm going to flip it. So you look at all those nice rich blue in the back. Oh, it's beautiful. So I have a piece of double-sided tape. This is just scotch tape um, that's double-sided. Uh, because this is queer and has less mess, you can use liquid glue or a hot glue gun if you want um, whatever it is that you have nearby. So I'm going to put that in the center and uh, press that for a second just to make sure it's down. Okay, and then um, I'll look at my bag and say, okay, I think I want it a little bit up here, or maybe I want it right in the center. So just kind of figure out where you want your flower um, and which direction you want to face, and then kind of eyeball it and um, press it down. So I'm pressing it down in the center. Just waiting a few seconds. Okay, and there we go. Um, also, the reason I have put the tape in the very middle is because I want to fluff out these petals. So I'm going to use that with my fingers. You can use tweezers. And I didn't glue the entire back side because I want to fluff it. I really love the three-dimensional quality of this, so I really want to let that show. So here's the side angle, right? You've got this nice three-dimensional flower on your bag. I wanna to mention too, if you've got like crafting scissors or more petite scissors than my massive ones I have, you can ins like cut and make other incisions in your petals if you want more of that um, back layer to show. So on my, um, this example, my earring example, I actually did make incisions here and kind of made my own little um, details. So you can do that too with your um, flower petals. So very customizable. And then I'll flip it to the back and um, do the same thing with my ribbon. I'll try and flip that over so you guys get the full effect here. Um, grab another piece of, for me, double-sided tape, but again, whatever got nearby, kind of, you know, get that stuck here on the back side. And then, you know, where do I want this placed? Um, I think right around there. And then, oh, moved. Press it down. Okay, yeah, we're almost there. Awesome. 
So we've got our ribbon here on the back of our goodie bag. We've got our flower here in the front. If we um, puff this out, expand it, pardon. We've got our nice purple contrast here on the side. So there we go. Here is our goodie bag. These look fantastic. And I really um, want to see what you guys have um, created. So can we, can you guys hold up your patience? For can those of you who finished up, please feel free to hold them up to the camera. That's okay. You don't have to be done right now. Yeah. But I would like to see what you guys have got. I know that some of you, I see Dorothy has been using brushes. So I'm wondering uh, what the watercolor version of this looks like. Yeah, that'd be really neat. Well, that looks nice. Yeah. Okay, so Gloria, I see hers. That looks really nice. Trying to see some other examples here. We've got a lot of good ones. I'm looking through the I'm looking through the list. Yeah. Okay, awesome. But yeah, is there any other um Questions you guys have for me or anything else returning um, referring to the demo? Anybody else? Demo questions? What do you want to just Non-demo questions. Grace wants to know if you have any pets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I do have a cat. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, that that. But uh, yeah, demo questions, anybody? Questions about Copic markers, anything like that? We'll do our best to answer them for you. Yeah, if not, um, I do want to mention, you know, if you have a, your finished, cre finished creation, whether it's right now or you want to finish it up later today, um, we have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, um, you know, tag us, Copic Official US, or um, I believe Michaels has a hashtag too, make it with Michaels. So um, yeah, please share. And again, a lot of ways to use these paper flowers, these ribbons. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, see you guys make some more um, three-dimensional Copic art. And um, just real quick before we end the demo today, um, I do want to mention too that we're going to be back for a third project next Thursday at the same time, 4 p.m. Central. And that um, is going to be using shrink plastic to make um, earrings. So I've got a template when you sign up for the class um, that you guys can uh, download and I'll be working um, with Copic Chow markers yet again and we're going to make some really awesome fall themed earrings. So yeah, um, Nate, do you have anything else? Nope, I am actually posting all our social channels here in the chat. Um, you can follow us uh, for updates about more Michaels classes, all kinds of new art, giveaways, uh, new products, things like that. Um, please follow those channels. Um, that's, that's my baby. Me and Jess work very hard on them. Um, and join us next week. Actually, we did have a quick question from Leanne. Uh, Leanne was asking if the template for the bookmark was available on our site. The answer is no, not yet, but stay tuned. We will put yes. it as soon as we are able. Yes. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me again. I will be with you guys next Thursday as well. And so will Nate. So um, I look forward Thanks to seeing you guys us. then and uh, just introducing another new way to use your quick markers. Yeah. We'll see you guys next so, week. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.